Right, um, question. <laughs> Out. A game is played with a fair six sided die which has four <laughs> red faces and two blue faces. One turn consists of throwing the die repeatedly until a blue face is on top or until the die has been thrown four times. This is quite an interesting game. In the answer book, you complete the following complete the problem tree diagram for one turn. Right, well, this was, this was where. Most people got the two marks for this because this is this isn't that difficult as it's due. So um, you have oh, you were given the first throw. There, that was this was given to you, and they they kind of set the scene for how you're supposed to be doing it. You have red and blue, and then you have to follow on from there. Well, it, it's not particularly difficult, is it, to to do this? If you stop when you get a blue face upwards, so there you're not going to do any more branches. You're going to do that one is going to be red or blue with probabilities two thirds and one third. If that's one there, you stop. That's going to be red or blue, one third and two thirds of running out of space. That's going to be red or blue, two thirds, one third. Uh, at that point you stop, I think you probably, although it, it didn't really matter, but I would have labelled second throw, third throw, fourth throw. There's your die. Um, I, I wouldn't advise putting any more on that diagram than that, as in, don't put the probabilities at the end of the branches. You may need them later on, but don't write them on the diagram, because that's not what was asked for. Um, the way that the marks were allocated were fairly generous on that. So it was the correct structure with no extra branches for one mark and no all branches. of the probabilities being correct for the second one, as in branches coming off a blue outcome. And they had to stop at that point. Right, part two. Find the probability that in one particular turn the die is thrown four times. Now quite a few people got this wrong and it's again, it's the same theme of overcomplication. So the probability of it being thrown four times is the same as the result that we get three consecutive reds. If we're going to throw it four times, we need three consecutive reds. It does not matter what happens on the fourth throw. Regardless of whether it's red or blue, a fourth throw has happened. So the probability that the die is thrown four times is two-thirds times two-thirds times two thirds, and that is it. So eight over 27. You do, of course, get the mark if you do red, 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 plus red, 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 blue. It's overcomplicating it, because what you're doing there is, is doing additional calculations that you don't need, but it gives you the same answer. It still gets too much. It still gets too much, but that doesn't make it better. Right. So there we go. But two thirds to the power of four scored zero. Okay. Straight away scored zero. If you did two thirds to the power of four. Right. Part three. This is where it got very exciting. Adnan and Beryl each have one turn. Find the probability that Adnan throws the die more times than Beryl. This is just stupid. Oh, I, I like, I like this. This was the one bit of this paper, the only bit of this paper, that I actually stopped and thought about for a moment before I embarked on doing any answer. And I'm going to show you the way that I did this, which is slightly different to the methods that are in the answer thing. But I, I, like, I like this in the end because it made me stop and think for a minute. So, I got to thinking, what I really need to know is the probability of the number of throws, of each of those number of throws. So I started out doing a little probability distribution table where x is the number of throws. I, I do want to say there are a number of different ways that you could do this, and this is just one of the ways that you could do it. But this is the way that it occurred to me. So I set this up as x. x could be 1, 2, 3, or 4. And I worked out the probability of each one happening. 
the probability of x being 1 is if we get a blue first time, because we stop. The probability of x being 2 is if we get a red and then a blue, so 2 thirds times 1 third, which is 2 ninths. The probability of x being 3 is if we have red, red, blue, so that's 2 thirds times 2 thirds times Oh, what's going on on the green? Anyway, we'll, we'll look at the next time. <laughs> two thirds times two thirds times one third is four thirds. So I just Luke caught a glimpse of something that said Luke Skywalker's hand. <laughs> <laughs> I thought, what messages are we? Yes, no, it's not. 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 It's not my probability distribution for x. And then I got to think, how can I find ways where Adnan does better than Beryl? So I, I set up a little two-way table. Adnan could score one, two, three, or four. Oh, I see. Blue's the guys. The GST office is a set of Peugeot keys with a Higgs, Barker, Fob, a grey pom-pom, and Luke's character. <laughs> well, well, we, it's a wow. I've just realised that's going to be on the video. Like how would you fit that in your pocket? Yeah. And Luke Skywalker. Is it a mini case? It's like well, I think I'm not wearing it. He's not wearing it. He's wearing it. That's why he only appeared right at the very end of the film. What, because someone chopped his head off? Yeah. And has it on their key fob. <laughs> right, if you haven't seen the film, then that's a, is that a spoiler? Yeah, it's a massive yeah, really yeah. yeah. To be honest, it was like the worst part of the film. You have to put spoiler there. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. Well, well, it's it's You did get in a million hours. Anyway, so let's, literally stare. Let's stop talking about Luke Skywalker. Right, um, so this is, this is what could happen. This is, Adnan could take one, two, three, or four throws. Beryl could take one, two, three, or four. So what would it look like? if Adnan had more throws than Beryl. Well, I then did a little thing where it would be if, if it was two and one, or three and two, or four and three, or, or anywhere in that space that's up there. So what are the probabilities in there? Well, that is one and two, so that's one third times two ninths. That one is one and times, that's one and three, so one third times four twenty-sevenths. That's one and four, so one third times eight, 27ths. Here is 2 and 3, so that's 2 ninths times 4 27ths. Here is 2 and 4, 2 ninths times 8 27ths. And here we have 3 and 4. There we go. All that's left for me to do is to add up all of these calculations. And there is my total. And so the total equals 266 over 79, if you add all of those up. And that was, that was my way of doing it. The, the mark scheme kind of set that out in much, a much longer form. So they had you working out all of these. They, these are six individual ways it could happen. So they had you working out what is one and two, one and three, one and four, two and three, two and four, three and four, and then adding them all together and coming up with that token. Well, it made me think. I liked the way it made me think. The last part of the question, it was quite nice to see that quite a few people who missed out part three altogether actually recovered their composure a little bit enough to answer the really very easy final part of the question, which says, what would need to happen to make this a geometric distribution? Well, the thing that stops it being geometric is that we commit to stopping after four throws whatever's happened. A geometric distribution would involve us keeping on going until we achieve the first blue. You keep going until the first successful outcome. So we keep going until blue. The first blue face. That's it. Or you, you, you remove the restriction on the number of rods. Wow, Alex is already there. That's maths. <laughs>